Now, understanding what slavery did in this fragmentation, this alienation from our holistic system, okay. I want to suggest to you that someone came along who, was, who did in a comprehensive system that I want to just suggest some parts of it to you, brought us a form of corrective spirituality. Okay. I want to identify some principles of this spirituality that are so critical that I think finds its best exemplification in the spiritual system of Elijah Muhammad. Ooh, ooh, ooh I knew he was going to get to that. I thought proselytizing. No, let's understand it. That's important. Elijah Muhammad stood as a voice of our Africanity, All right. calling us back to ourselves. He used Islam as a symbolic system to do what Africans had already always done. Now let me talk about several things of how he did it, and, I, you know, I, and it, it's comprehensive, that's why I think it's such a good example. He first of all argued that there is a spiritual order, and he argued that even though corrupted, the Bible and the Quran have access to that spiritual order. And then what he began to do? He began to show how every story in the books was talking about us. They talked about the captives in Egypt. He said, that's you. They began to talk about Babylon. He said, that's you. Began to talk about the beast in the old, in the Revelation. That's you. And then he began to talk about Adam, the original man, in the first book. He said, that's you too. Talked about Jesus. He said, that's you. Talked about Elijah, he said, that's me. <laughs> Talked about jo Joshua, said, that's us. Talked about Solomon. Talked about all of them. Talked about David. Talked about every symbol in the book. Talked about Noah. Talked about the flood. What he did was restored the isolated, cold, dead letter scriptures that had become excuses for looking for facts that have been immortalized and monumentalized in a stone dead structure, he brought them back to life. So no longer was the Red Sea over there. Red Sea was getting from Selma into Mississippi. The Red Sea was trying to get past the Klan. The Red Sea was trying to get human beings, African Americans, to begin to once again take control of their lives and their activities. But look what he did in the process. He reconnected us with an understanding that spiritual truth transcends time, person, place, and thing. That spiritual truth is a transcendent reality. All right. He let us begin to experience the fact, not only, I'm going to get to this piece in a minute, not only is this book talking about me, bad black man, bad black woman, bad black child, but furthermore, it is in fact dealing with my contemporary reality. Mm -hmm. It talks about something that uses pictures from old to identify realities from the day. Right. So look at the genius of what this man was doing. He then hooked us up with a past and made it present, took something that we were walking around glorifying the Jews, feeling they were chosen people thinking that God would go into Egypt and pull them out, but would ignore us. That they would let them be faced by Sodom and Gomorrah and all the destructive things, but would leave us in the midst of uh, 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 Showtime television and triple X-rated pornographic, use your dildo with your condom on your head, standing with the beast and the dog and all at the same time stuff. That somehow begin to believe that we were faced with that reality and God wouldn't come get us. But what he did is that he brought it back to life. All right. And the people who accepted the concept found themselves re-energized because they found that they were once again within the spiritual context of reality. Secondly, he says that you can do nothing unless you know the reality of God and the reality of the devil. Now the thing that got him in real trouble with these orthodox Arabs called Muslims and these orthodox African Americans who call themselves Muslims but they're really Arabs was that he said God is a man blew their minds they couldn't take that 
That made you a kafir. <coughs> that was a disbelief of the basic principle of Islam. But look what he did. He took people out of the sky, praying to an Allah who was way over eons of space and capability, took people away from this notion of a deity that lives isolated in the uh, celestial sphere somewhere, and began to make man once again accountable for a present ongoing relationship with the divine. Now, given what had happened, that is that we had come to believe consciously and unconsciously, as Bishop Stalins has said, as Dr. Garinga has said, we had come to believe that God was white. Right now, this very minute, even though all of you call yourselves highly conscious people, I'd be willing to bet you that when the gospel choir was singing, I want to get back to Jesus, Jesus can get me through, if you close your eyes, you saw a blonde haired man floating around the room. I'd be willing to bet you. I'd be willing to bet you. 90% of you couldn't imagine a black Jesus if you tried. You could reach all into your Afrocentric capability and all you could pull up out of your unconscious was there he was again, dressed in white, draped in a robe, walking the water with blonde hair, blue eyes, a long hair flowing in the wind, pale skinned white boy, barefoot, barefoot. And that's your concept of God. Now, when, don't you know that when something is that ingrained in your mind, ingrained in your consciousness, you need something severe to knock you back, to knock you back to reality. Even Muslims did not see Muhammad. They were told not to see Allah no more, but most of them who used to be Christians kept on seeing Allah's Jesus anyway. Same old thing, believe me, I know, because later on, they started accepting the supremacy of the Arabs over the supremacy of themselves hey. as a concept of understanding their own religion. That's another story. But the idea was that this whole picture and concept of God as a white man was embedded in the minds of both of them. So as soon as a black man said, this thinking will begin to change your life and change your possibilities and begin to put you back in conjunction with universal powers of spiritual transformation and human power and civilized life and did it, took the junkies out of jail, got them straight, took poor folks, bought banks, bought farmland, had a trucking system, introduced the concept of a national newspaper to USA Today. Long before USA Today even thought of it, Muhammad Speaks was a national black newspaper, had shown that black women who had lost respect could regain respect, and black men who'd had no respect for their women could learn how to respect them again and transform both of them into powers that were able to change a whole society, and made a Malcolm out of Detroit Red. Detroit Red, a no good jive pimp, innately brilliant, innately intelligent, but unable to grasp his own potential because he was fragmented. Hey. And he read the messenger's idea about what man's possibilities were and what the reality of God was, the reality of man was, the reality of the black man was, and suddenly Detroit Red became Malcolm, the bad man X. Look, there is no psychologist who can boast of that. Come on, Akbar, come on, Nobles, come on, any of the rest of them. Come on, Pettigrew, come on, uh, what's that crazy, Kenneth Clark, you know, come on. Show what you can do. Come on, Freud, come on, Maslow, come on, Skinner, come on, any of you. Show me one Malcolm whose concept of life was able to fundamentally change and he become an instrument for all humanity based upon these kinds of notions. The idea of the reality of God was necessary to reintegrate us with ourselves. We had to know that God was not, you see everybody got upset, well you talk about God as a man, you already believed he was a man. It was very, very, it was very bifurcated and very complicated with all these eschatological and theological syncretisms about the unity of the Trinitarian doctrine, bringing together the triplicate of the one into the oneness and the oneness into the triplicate and the multifarious manifestations of the oneness of being. All that old confusing stuff, nobody understood that. But it was a way to convince people that God was man, but he was.